okay so today is august 8th of 2021 we're just going to continue our bible study so um we had the bible teaching segment already on the lamb of god now this is the bible study so um and this of course is the god series we already did god the father we wrapped that up a few weeks ago now we're into god the son because we're looking at it in three separate segments. We're looking at God the Father. Then we're looking at God the Son. And lastly we'll look at God the Holy Spirit. And so um, the first name that we're looking at for God the Son is the Lamb of God. So this title was given to Jesus by John the Baptist. And it tells us in John 1.29. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming he said behold. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And um, so in the and also in the Old Testament, a lamb was a sacrificial animal used during the annual Passover and daily sacrifices. So that's where that title, Lamb of God, that's why it's being applied to Jesus as the sacrifice. Um, and that's where it was actually, you know. Um, directed to Jesus was uh, in John 1 then uh, the focus scripture for all three segments of this series is found in 1st John 5 7 to 8 where there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one the forethought the series forethought so what do we um, want to gain as a result of this series so God is a triune being father son and spirit he made us in his image and likeness body soul and spirit as we learn about the triune nature of God we will learn about the triune nature of man and in doing so we will gain a more effective and fulfilling walk of faith the scripture that I looked at for the teaching segment was Isaiah 52 13 to 53 7 and then for the Bible study part the scripture is Psalm 22 so a few points I want to pull out a little more from the video Jesus was the sacrificial lamb and I just kind of explained that already so I'm not going to go over that part again the next point he now has a name above every name and has all power in heaven and earth and so that's what that scripture was that I read talked about. The Bible tells us that Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Lord in heaven. And all power has been given to him. All power in heaven and earth and under the earth. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. So although he was a sacrifice, and he was treated so horribly to the point where he was even um, didn't look like a person anymore. The Bible tells us that how they, they beat him, they taunted him, they mocked him, they laughed at him, they spit on him. They put a huge cross on him and made him carry it. And it was so heavy, he actually, someone else actually intervened and helped him carry it at one point. But the things they did to him were so horrible, more punishment than any person has ever experienced. And we know that he was God, so he could have stopped it. But he was looking at the larger picture. He was looking at what would happen to all of us in humanity if he had stopped it. He knew that that was the only way for us to ever be in right standing, to be righteous with God again. Righteousness to God is important. People come up with ideas about, you know, they can go to heaven if they are good. You, we can't get to decide what qualifies us to enter into heaven. The Bible tells us, and if you just look at all of the stuff that God, the Son, submitted to, so that we could be in right standing with God again. That should let anybody know that God's standard is the standard and the only standard. It took his only son and it took all of the stuff that he had to go through for us to be able to even be in right standing with God again. 
even even if nobody had ever accepted the call to become a Christian he still would have done what he did because he still had to give a chance to humanity to get right with God um, the next point um, let's see I had that he was marred more than any man I just kind of said that next point when he was born the universe got involved he was a special child he was a special baby his birth was special the stars got involved the angels got involved the shepherds got involved the wise men got involved um, and then you know all types of things happen around his birth and the, the, the enemy was so afraid of his of him being born that he used um, uh, let's see I'm sorry, I can't think of exactly who it was right now, but the order was given for every, the king was, the king ordered that every child under a certain age, man, boy child, man child, be killed because the enemy was trying to get rid of Jesus. So he used a man to carry out his wicked plan. And so, you know, it was mass murder of children men children under a certain age so that trying to kill off the Messiah but it but it didn't work and and um, and Jesus Jesus um, you know it didn't work but that's how threatened the enemy was that he was trying to stop the plan of God but everything you know that, that what his birth caused everything to take notice hell took notice earth took notice the heavens took notice everything took notice when Jesus came into this world and he came into the world born of a virgin and then the next point um, he was heavy laden. It talked about the scripture I read. Talked about he was a man that had great sorrows, and and he did. His sorrows were because of the gravity of what he had to do. He, even though he was God, he still felt it as a man. So he submitted to all of it, but he felt it, all of it, not even just the physical, but the emotional. The emotional wounds that took a toll on him. How he was so, you know, you know, people can feel that they are undervalued or, you know, their worth is not noticed or no one values them. But can you imagine how God himself felt when he came here to um, make a way for his creation? to get back to heaven so that we would be in right standing with God and and the, the people that he created had no regard for him he was heavy laden he was full of grief um, he carried grief for what he was experiencing but also for what he knew about what he knew would happen if he did not submit and for the condition of humanity he was he was well acquainted with grief. And then the last point, with his stripes we are healed. You know, sometimes um, the Bible is revealed sometimes a little bit at a time. You even, even generations. There are things in the Bible that have been covered so that they could not be fully understood until a certain time. And then it's like the scales scales fall off of the eyes and you can start to see um, things that the scripture says that it doesn't that you never noticed before but Christ there and I'm saying that to say there are movements and and Christianity is so divided there are some Christians that feel like the only valid healing or the only type of healing that God approves of is a miraculous like if he just heals us from heaven 
but they are forgetting that he created the earth for us he created the earth realm for us he told us to subdue and dominate the earth the earth is to benefit mankind he purposely put healing elements in nature so that man could subdue it and uncover it and unearth it and use it and benefit from it but there are some Christians that for whatever reason they don't see that well God created everything the tree is as much as his creation as a person is and if he told man to use these things to dominate and subdue them it only makes sense in fact it's a mandate it's a commandment of God that we do that and so when when people neglect to appreciate the value that comes through the the elements that he made that when those things are subdued and you can pull out the healing and they undervalue it they don't realize but they are actually undervaluing what God did there is no one else that put the healing in the plants in the herbs in whatever it is found in no one put it there but God and so if certain churches and things like that are saying oh but that's not valid what are you talking about did not God make the tree did he not make the the things that that um are, are giving healing so it, it really doesn't make sense but you know the Bible told us in that scripture that I read with his stripes we're healed he's healing us he it doesn't say he'll only heal us in one way no he'll heal us and sometimes the heal is progressive sometimes the healing is instantaneous sometimes the healing does not take place in this lifetime but we are eternal beings and so it doesn't manifest until we are in our eternal life because we won't have um, sickness there anymore however those that don't accept Christ whatever they had they'll still still have they don't get relief from the from anything just because they go into eternal life but we as Christians will and so with his stripes we're healed and we need to be thankful for his healing in whatever way it manifests and so that's the last point I want to make and so now I want to go to the scripture which is a um, a pretty long scripture um, so I'm going to break it up Faye could you first read chapters one, verses 1 to 5 for Psalm 22 sure okay my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. Okay, thank you. So, this is um, was written by King David. David was also a prophet. Sometimes when a person is given a prophecy, they, they also mix in events, so, something from current or something that is relevant but is not a part of the coming prophecy but it maybe has to do with something that's in their environment in that day and so sometimes prophecies can be a little confusing almost like poetry because poetry you can borrow you can borrow from the real you can borrow from the fictional you can use different elements and mesh them together and so poetry can be a mixture of things too and so here this first part my God my God why hast thou forsaken me that was actually said by Jesus on the cross when he was um, being crucified and the reason he said that 
My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He felt forsaken of God. The only reason he could have felt forsaken is he felt that God had turned away from him. But once the sin of humanity was placed on him, God had to turn away because God cannot, um, he turns away from sin. And so even though this was a part of the plan that our sin would be placed on Jesus, God still is a righteous. He still, he still could not, um, there was a, there was a gulf. The gulf still was there when, um, because if it wasn't, Jesus would not have been able to die. So for a moment, it must have felt like he was forsaken because God had to allow for death to take hold. Death, death was experienced by Jesus, but it could not contain Jesus because he was not sinful. Think of the phrase duck water off of a duck's back. So the, the duck can get wet. You can pour water all over a duck. But the water can't. It can't stay on the duck. Because there's something on the duck that's going to repel the water. And that's how death was with Jesus. Death could be applied to him. But it couldn't stick to him. It couldn't adhere, adhere to him. Because there was something on Jesus that repelled death. And what that was was true righteousness. He was really righteous. And so even though the um, our sins were temporarily placed on him, they could not grab hold of him because they were illegitimate sins. They were not rightly applied because he still was actually righteous. And can you read um, verses 6 to 8? Okay. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh at me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Oh, you thou didst make me hope. I'm sorry, you can stop, Faye. Uh, oh, okay. Uh-huh. So this is talking about remember David is prophesying. But this actually this is what happened with Jesus' experience. Jesus was in in anguish. David is seeing this that this is going to happen. He's going to feel so bad that he doesn't even feel like a man anymore. He feels like he's nothing more than even like just a worm, just nothing. And um, it's talking about the reproach of men, how men mistreated him. It's talking about how they laughed at him. This was all when they were taunting him. When they were saying, when they blindfolded him and said, if you are the son of man, they blindfolded him and then they punched him. And they would spit on him and do all types of things and slap him. If you are the, if you are the son of man, if you are uh, the son of God, prophesy who hit you so this uh, this prophecy is talking about all that and it says they shoot out the lip this is him David seeing the environment that this would happen these people would be puffed up and proud and think about it today when people are are laughing and talking about each other people how they do their mouths how they shoot out their lips their lips get poked out and they're arrogant and talking and they're shaking their heads and move it. So David is seeing this happen. Um, and it says he trusted on the Lord that would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him. They're taunting him. They're saying, oh, you trusted in God. But look at what God is letting happen to you. In other words. Um, and then. Um, I'm sorry. I did say. I said 9 to eight, nine to 18. No, I said 6 to 8. Could you read 9 to 18? Okay. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. 
I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and my bone and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs, dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. They cart my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Okay, thank you. So, um, this is just again David seeing what was going to happen. He's prophesying about how he's prophesying as if he were Jesus. He's saying what Jesus was feeling like. Um, when it says many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls. So he's talking about the the strong people, the leaders, people who were prominent, who were strong, and they were all around him. And it says they they were uh, like ravening and roaring lions. How they were shouting at him and saying all types of Look, think about people today. We've even seen scenes like that recently on TV with people that are like ravening, roaring lions, and how they are surrounded, how they surrounded that, the, um, you know, the capital, and um, how they're, um, um, how they're, or they surrounded Congress, and how their mouths were like roaring lions, and the loud sounds coming out of their mouths, and how they were just all around. That's a scene that would that you could look at and apply that to what was going on with Jesus. Just all around him with this fierce viciousness. And they but they were the strong people, they were the leaders. Um, let's see. And then he's talking about how he felt. He's talking about how his tongue cleaved to his jaws. He was so thirsty. And even at one point when he was so thirsty and they offered him something to drink on a sponge to drink, but it was vinegar. So even, even in that, when he was so thirsty, he just wanted something to drink, their cruelty extended. They had no mercy. And when you look at how some scriptures talk about God's mercy, his mercy endureth forever. His mercy endureth forever. Well, this is a, an example of merciless people. They had no mercy. Even when he was already at death's door, dying, just wanted a little something to drink. They, Their mercy, they had, still had no mercy. And they gave him vinegar instead of giving him something that would have at least given him a, a little bit of relief. Um, and then 22 to 27. I'm sorry, Faye. I'm sorry. 19 to 21. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Okay, so this is just him calling out for... The help of God. Um, he just he just needs God's help, and that's just his. This is showing his desperation, how he was so in need of something, and so he was calling out to God to 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 save him, to help him. And then um, let's see. Can you read 22 to 27? I will declare thy name unto my brethren. 
in the midst of congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard me. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Okay. Um and then and then just twenty seven also. Okay. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindred of the nations shall worship before thee. Okay, thank you. And so this is just saying, so remember this is a prophetic poem. So it left off from talking about what was going on with Jesus and how he was suffering. Now this is going into after the victory and how, you know, he how he continued to declare the name of the Lord and is talking um I'll, I'll focus in on that last 27 all the ends of the world shall remember and turn into the Lord and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee Christianity is spread throughout the world so now all nations know about Jesus um, you know um, there are some people that still have not heard the gospel but the Bible promises that before Jesus comes back the whole world will have will the gospel will have spread to the whole world and that's what we're seeing now look at how many people this prophecy is still going on actually because the gospel is not to all people yet to all nations it's in a lot of nations in a lot of places still have some people that have never heard the word of God some nations so before Jesus returns all nations will have heard about him. And then can you just read to the end of that um, psalm? Okay. All they that be sat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for generations. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto, unto a people that shall be warned that he hath done this. And this is just still talking about the effects of the gospel. So now he's talking about, um, verse 28 says, For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. So now that's why we talk about now the kingdom of God, um, the children of God. That's why the Bible that uh, talks about that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So now, as a result of God's is his sacrifice, and he was the the, um, the Lamb of God. Um, he did sacrifice as a lamb, but then he was exalted by God in that act where he humbled himself. That is how he was able to make it possible for us for all of humanity to someday be able to be right with God again and so the end in the end even though he submitted to all of that humiliation he was victorious at the end now he has a name that is above every name and at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and so I'll go ahead and wrap up um, the Bible study portion and then we'll go ahead and have the discussion. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for yet another day just to think about you, to learn about you. Help us to better understand this, um, the Lamb of God. And just help us, Lord, to, to apply your word to our everyday living in a practical way where we can, um, where it makes sense for us and where we can live out your perfect will and way for our lives. I ask that you will bless us, keep us, make your face shine upon us, lift up your countenance upon us, be gracious to us, and give us peace. 
and everyone that agree with the prayer can say Amen. Amen. Amen.